Hey everybody, this is Russ from Retro Game Core. So today I want to show off a new tool available in ArcOS called Portmaster. Now this tool allows you to choose from a series of different ports that have been set up for this firmware. It's as easy as navigating through the interface, downloading the port, and then adding your own game files if required. And if that experience sounds familiar to you, it's because it should. About seven months ago I did a video about Amber ports, which was built upon this same idea as well. The developer of Amber Ports did a tremendous job in basically making a bunch of different PC and standalone games working on the RG351 devices. But unfortunately, development on Amber Ports has basically disappeared. And so the developer of ArcOS and a couple other people in the community got together and made this Portmaster instead. And it builds upon that foundational work that was made in Amber Ports, but streamlines the process to make it a little bit more easy and also has a good amount of documentation to make sure you know exactly what to do to make these games work. And I'm also going to show off a couple new games that I haven't shown on this channel before, as well as a nice update to one of my favorite homebrew games. And if you're wondering whether or not this is going to work on your device, I'll tell you that it works on all supported versions of ArcOS at this moment, as well as versions of ArcOS that are no longer in development, like for the RG351P or the RG351M. And we'll test out a couple other firmwares as well. So without any further ado, let's jump into it. Okay, so what am I talking about when I say devices that are currently in development under ArcOS? Well, I basically mean the RG351V, the RGB10, and the Gameforce Qi, as well as the RK2020 and the original Odraco Advanced devices. And I would expect that in the coming weeks, RG351MP will also be supported. Now, by actively developed, I mean the fact that it still carries over-the-air updates. So if you connect your device to the internet, and then go into the Options section, just navigate down to the Updates tool. And in here, it's going to check whether or not you need a new update, and then it'll update your firmware. Mine's totally up to date, so I don't need to do it, but that's where you would go. Now, as long as you're in the most recent version of ArcOS, you should see the Portmaster tool in that same options menu. And you can open that up, and it's going to ask you, do you want to update Portmaster? I would recommend saying yes at least once a day, because anytime he makes any updates to Portmaster, it'll be reflected in the new version. So once it checks for a new update, it'll close out and then just jump right back into it. And this time, just select no for the update. This will take you to the main menu. And the menu couldn't be any simpler. You just navigate through the list of ports and then choose the ones you want to download. And I can't remember how many are available right now. I'm just eyeballing it here, but I would say something like 25, maybe 30 ports altogether. And some of these ports are totally open source, so you can just download the entire game right then and there. Let me show you a couple examples of that. The first one here is called Spelunky. So all you have to do is press A, and then it's going to say, hey, this is the game, and do you want to download it? And you just hit yes. And at that point, it'll pull all the game files and then install them onto ArcOS. It'll take about a minute or so, and it'll ask you to restart Emulation Station so that you can see the game in the ports menu. But before that, let's download another open source game. This one's called Super Mario War. Same process here, we'll download and install it. And then press Select and Start to quit out of Portmaster. Now once you're in the menu, press Start, then go to Quit, and then select Restart Emulation Station. It's going to ask you, do you really want to restart? And you say, yeah, man, I want to do it. Now, under your ports menu, you should find the games that you downloaded. I have a bunch here because I've always played around with different ports, but you can see here there's Spelunky and Super Mario War. So let's test out Spelunky first and see if it boots. And look at that, it just boots right up. So this is kind of a cool concept, the ability to just immediately download and install an open source game and start playing it right then and there on your device. And I've never really played this game that much, but I've heard great things about it. So let's try the other one we downloaded. Here's Super Mario War. Now this one's pretty fun. It's basically a multiplayer battle game. And the object is to jump on the head of your opponents. And despite the fact that it has kind of rudimentary graphics, it's a really fun game. Honestly, like I had like a white knuckled experience when I was playing this. I was freaking out that the computer was going to beat me. And the AI is actually pretty good. Anyway, check this one out if you want. Okay, so now let's try installing something that requires game data files. We'll start with AM2R, another Metroid 2 remake. Now this game has been available in Amber Ports and other ones as well, but this uses the most recent version of the Android app. And the way this is set up, you actually have to add the Android app itself. We'll do that later in this video, but for now, let's just download and install the AM2R file. Next, there's another port that's been added called Freedom Planet. And this was a game I also had never tried, but I'd heard good things. This one also requires its own commercial game data files. So let's go ahead and install this one too. Now once you have these installed, go ahead and exit out of Portmaster, and then you can actually shut down your device, because we're going to need to access the SD card. So we're going to pull out the game's SD card from our device and put it into our computer. On top of that, we're going to need the Freedom Planet files. 
Now, I bought this game on the Humble Store for $7.5 on sale, so you could buy it wherever you like. I honestly have been using the Humble Store a lot lately because it also gives you a Steam key so you can add it to Steam afterwards. Either way, once you've purchased the game, it'll give you a download link and just download the Linux version of the game. Additionally, you're going to want to download and find the AM2R Android app. So just search for AM2R APK and you'll find what you need. Now, if we go to the Portmaster page on the ArcOS wiki, which I'll have linked in the written guide in my video description, you can actually go into the port section and see specifically what game files are needed for every port. So for example, with AM2R, it says you need the Android APK and you need to name it AM2R.APK, all lowercase. So once we've renamed that, let's go into ports, then AM2R, then the game data folder, and then we're just gonna move over that APK. And that's it, we've now moved over the game data files. Now let's do the same for Freedom Planet. We're gonna go into that folder, then game data, and then let's go to the wiki page to see what specifically they require. And then within this paragraph, you're gonna see the list of all the game data files that are required. But I'll walk you through how to do that real quick with this one. When you first download that Freedom Planet game file, it's gonna be in a tar format. We're gonna to wanna to change this to something we can open up. What you wanna do is rename the file and add the .7z file extension behind it. It's gonna make you confirm, and then after that, you've basically turned it into a 7-zip file. Now, if you open up that file with 7-zip, you should be able to extract the contents of this file. So we're gonna open it up, navigate in until we find the game folders, and then we wanna move over these first four game folders, and that's it. It'll take about a minute to move things over, but it's a fairly simple process. Once that's done, we have successfully moved over the game files required for both AM2R and Freedom Planet. So let's eject the SD card, put it back into our device, and see how it plays. We're going to navigate to the port section, and then let's pick AM2R first. And yeah, sure enough, it boots right up. Now I've heard there's a lot of good improvements with the latest version of AM2R, but I haven't really gotten too far into the game yet. Overall, all I know is that the controls and the overall feel of the game are super smooth now. It's a very enjoyable experience. So if you enjoyed the original Metroid 2 on the Game Boy, this is a new remake of that game built from the ground up. It's pretty amazing. Okay, let's try out Freedom Planet next. This one takes about a minute, maybe even a minute and a half to first boot up. But after that, it runs smooth as butter. And the graphics on this look really nice. This game is available both on PC as well as on the Nintendo Switch. So it's kind of cool to see a game of this caliber playing on your device like that. And it has full voice acting for everything. And the gameplay is pretty nice. It reminds me a bit of Sonic the Hedgehog, maybe not quite as fast. But then your character can also use a weapon. It's definitely a love letter to classic 2D side-scrolling games, but I'm really going to enjoy playing through this one. Okay, so that's how to get everything running on a device that's currently running an updated version of ArcOS. But what if you're using an RG351P or an RG351M, which is no longer currently being actively developed? Well, it turns out that it's actually pretty easy to get Portmaster working on this. We're going to remove our SD card and put it into our computer. And now we're going to manually install Portmaster. On my written guide, I'm going to have links to the Portmaster page to the three specific files that we need to download. So open up that page, and then on your EasyROMs partition, navigate to the Tools folder, and then make a new folder here and call it Portmaster. Then open up that folder, and this is where we're going to put our files. Now downloading files directly on GitHub can be a little bit weird. So for the first one, you're going to click on the title, then right click on the word raw, and then download that link. That's going to download the sh file. As you can see here, it ported over and it matches the sh file here on this page. So one down, two more to go. For this next one, just click on it and then click on download. And that'll download the file. And for the last one, same thing here, we're going to click on it and then right click on the raw button and then save link as. But you'll see that it's going to try to save it as a text file. What you want to do is change save as file type to all files and then remove the .txt. I know it's a bit of a workaround, but that's how you get all three of these files onto your device. After that, you're actually done. You've now installed Portmaster. So go ahead and eject your card, and let's put it back into our device, and then boot up ArcOS again. Now we're going to go into the Options section, and you should see a folder named Tools. And within here, you'll find another folder named Portmaster. And there you're going to find the Portmaster tool. And just like that, it's going to work exactly like we saw earlier in the video. So you can navigate through the menu, pick your games, download them, and then add your game files just in the same way that we did previously. Now I'm not going to walk you through that whole process again because we just did it, but let me show you what it's like after you've done it. Go into your port section, and there you go, there's Freedom Planet. And just like with the other one, it boots up. 
and it also looks and feels really good on this device. Now, while we're on the subject of ArcOS for the RG351P and the RG351M, I do want to point out one option that you do have available for you. So the developer behind this channel here has actually been updating ArcOS using their own fork, and they've done some pretty cool things. For example, they've re-implemented over-the-air updates, and they've also added in some things that were previously not available. For example, more updated versions of RetroArch, as well as a couple added RetroArch cores. So if you're on the RG351M or P, and you're using ArcOS, but you want to make sure that you still get updates from time to time, it might be worthwhile to check out this channel and see how you can fork it over. It's a very simple process. Now, when it comes to other firmwares, the Retro Arena actually has Portmaster already built into a couple of their different firmware releases. For example, their Odrego Super firmware release has both Portmaster and Theme Master, and Theme Master is a similar program that allows you to download various themes for ArcOS. And booting up Portmaster does work, and it'll even navigate through the menus, and you can even install games. But some of the games, for example, Freedom Planet and AM2R, won't work. And it has to do with video libraries that need to be updated, and so I expect there will be fixes for this in the future, but it is something to be aware of if you are going to use Retro Arena with Portmaster at the time of making this video. And that being said, Portmaster won't boot at all with 351 Elec, but I've heard that they're working on getting that compatible as well. So, fingers crossed, we might see it on 351 Elec as well. Anyway, that's really it for this video. I don't want to keep you too long. I want to give you the opportunity to jump onto Portmaster and start playing some new games. Overall, I'm really excited with this release because everything that I've tested, at least on the ArcOS builds, works perfectly. And that was not something I was able to say about Amber Ports. And I would say the biggest strength of Portmaster is the wonderful documentation that is on the ArcOS wiki page, because that's going to make everyone's lives so much easier. So that's it for this video. I appreciate you watching. Let me know if you have any questions in the comments below, and be sure to like and subscribe if you found this helpful. And we will see you next time. Happy gaming!